Joining me right now with his plans to manage it in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin. Governor, good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Yeah, good morning, Maria. And I just want to let everyone know how uh, proud I am of Republicans coming together around Speaker Johnson and getting things moving. It's a critical time around the world and in our nation, and we need leadership. And I'm happy to see him go to work. And what does that leadership mean for Virginia? Well, as you know, Maria, we're in the we're in the middle of very important elections. I think the most important elections in the nation. And we have a chance to put on the ballot our track record of growing jobs and back in the blue and standing up for parents and and it reinforcing excellence in education. And I think these are foundational to America's success. We're going to have Virginians come out and and hopefully hopefully flip our flip our Senate and hold our house. And this is what's at stake. And so it's great to see Republicans unified, working, working together in order to, to advance the interests of America, not only around the world, but at home here in the states. And your comment around the chaos that we're seeing at the southern border is just another example of the weakness from Joe Biden. We see weakness in foreign policy, and now we have international chaos. We see weakness at the border, and we have drug chaos, national security chaos, and a humanitarian chaos. And we see weakness in our economy because he doesn't understand that we have to have fiscal responsibility. We have to have an aggressive energy policy that preserves our advantage as as a domestic full supplier of everything that we need. And this is working against America in all aspects. And I see it in Virginia. As we see inflation stealing hard-earned Virginians' money, we see people worrying about their next job, and yet here we are fighting against it with, with providing huge tax relief. We have tax checks going out this week to Virginians. We've gone from the bottom of job growth to near the top of job growth in the country. Common sense conservative policies work, and I'm so excited to present those to voters here in the next 10 days. So you think this is one of the most important elections, if not the most important election for the country when you take a look at the legislature in Virginia. How can you reverse some of this? Do you think that getting the seat in Virginia could help the Republicans take the Senate overall? Yeah, absolutely. And and at the at the heart of this is a state that just 24 months ago was completely controlled by the Democrats. And in 24 short months, we've put common sense conservative policies to work. Virginia is soaring. And now Virginians have a chance to not just give us our House majority back, but flip the Senate. And therefore, I will no longer <clears throat> have a group of progressive left senators that try to block us at every turn. And we can unleash the full potential of the Commonwealth, further reducing taxes, further backing the blue, further empowering parents, and further working together towards a future for Virginians that I think reflects on the future for America. I think there's hope in what we're doing in Virginia right now. All the progressive left is doing is trying to sell fear, and hope beats fear every day of the week. Tell me about the open border and how it's impacted Virginia, because we're talking about 7 million people who have come into this country on Joe Biden's watch. Uh, The gotaways, these are just the gotaways that we know of. There are plenty more that have uh, gotten into this country, evaded apprehension. Uh, What has it meant for Virginia and what does the border need? They're talking about sending money to the border. It's my understanding that the border doesn't need money. It needs a policy change. Yeah. uh, Let me begin that Virginia has 8.7 million people. So we've nearly seen the entire state of Virginia come across the border. It's unbelievable. And and this chaos that has not only created a humanitarian crisis is creating a national security crisis and a drug crisis. And we've seen the cartels press into all of the states. So now every state's a border state. We're working hard to try to interdict interdict the, the, the illegal flow of drugs across the border. We have, on average, five Virginians a day that die of fentanyl overdoses. Uh, This is what's happening at the border. So we have to secure the border. It is a full policy shift so that we can stop the flow of illegal drugs, illegal people, and really criminals coming across the border. And we see it every day in the Commonwealth. Our law enforcement agencies are working hard in order to combat this. But let me tell you, violent crime is a real challenge because of gangs and drugs, and this all starts at the border. And let me get your take on the anti-Semitism that we're seeing now erupt across the country and particularly on college campuses. You've been so good on education and took a real leadership role uh, in terms of what was happening in our schools. How would you assess these protests ongoing at, at our colleges across the country right now? 
Well, it all starts with 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 the indefatigable condemnation of a terrorist attack on the Jewish people in Israel. And let's be clear, this was brutal and barbaric. They invaded Israel and killed women and children, literally in ways that are almost hard to conceive. And therefore, while we always want to protect our constitutional rights, I absolutely condemn what's being chanted at the at these rallies. And I think we need leadership from our college campuses. The bottom line is I question what's being taught on these college campuses if we have students that don't fully understand the brutality of a terrorist group. Hamas is a terrorist group, and they committed a terrorist act, and they killed women and children, and we have to condemn it. If we don't, we condone it, and there's no fence to sit on here. Israel has the absolute right to defend itself. They must eradicate a terrorist organization, and we have to stand with them. And I think it just reflects the fact that there is reckless, reckless speech going on across this country at this moment, and we need to be unified in our support of Israel. Governor, you were also so good in terms of pushing back on China, and you have been uh, very much on alert. Uh, what do you think is going on with all of these Chinese uh, nationals coming into the country now by boat into Florida and, and the keys there? You can't just leave China, right, and just get on a boat and come to America without getting approval from the communist government. Is, is, isn't that right? Well, it all starts with Joe Biden's weakness when it comes to, to foreign policy. And it's creating chaos around the world. And his weakness in dealing with China has enabled China to feel very confident about their economic coercion, their military aggression, their extensive surveillance. And on top of that, now trying to embed Chinese nationals in America so that they can advance their agenda. And this is why we work so hard in order to ban TikTok and all our state devices, yep. to pass legislation that forbids the Communist Party of China from acquiring land in Virginia. I mean, Maria, we're, it's Virginia. We have the largest naval base in the world. We have Quantico. We have the Pentagon. We have the entire uh, national security apparatus in Virginia. And we're going to have to protect them. And I think that we need to have the same legislation across the entire country that, that forbids the Communist Party of China from acquiring land, agriculture, anything anywhere near any of our national security installations. And this is critical because they have shown no hesitation to violate every norm from surveillance to planning people in, uh, in America and in Virginia. It gets back to the border. It gets back to weakness in international policy. It gets back to weakness of Joe Biden. Governor, thanks for your leadership. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Maria, and all Virginians, get out and vote this week. We need your vote. We've got to hold our house and flip our Senate. There you go. Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, thank you. We'll be right back.